This video is part of the Passport.js user authentication series, and it is kind of a follow-up discussion to my video on HTTP headers and cookies. So I'll leave a link to the series playlist below and that other video, which should be just before this. It can also be used as a standalone lesson if you just want to know a little bit more about how express sessions or sessions in general work. So in this case, we're going to be looking at a very simple express app, and I'm going to take you through how the session is working, how the cookies kind of work with the session, and some of the configuration that you have to do to set up the express session middleware. What I've got open right now is the repository that goes along with this Passport.js tutorial series. And we just have a, a folder for little one-off tutorials like this one. I've already created an application, which is an express application. And I'm just gonna quickly walk you through what I've done, and then we'll go through what's actually happening, what are some of these configuration options. So the first thing that I've done, I've already installed my dependencies. Um, we've got Express, Mongoose for the database, and then Express Session, which is an NPM module. We then have something called Connect Mongo, which we'll get to in a few minutes. It's what we're going to actually use for the session store. Um, then, of course, we set up our Express app, pretty familiar to most people. We connect to our database right here. So I'm just using a completely unauthenticated um, localhost database. I've got that running in the background already, so if you're trying to follow along, be sure that you um, get the MongoDB server or that process running before you try to run this app. So we're just going to use the tutorial database, and then these options here are just set because when you run the application, Mongo is going to complain about it if you don't put these. So that is all we've got, and we create the connection right here. So the connection represents um, our database connection. And then down here, we have some pretty familiar JSON and URL encoded middleware, which is going to allow the Express server to parse the different request um, types. So that just pertains to the type of um, responses that we're getting um, in on the server and then finally we have things related to the session itself which we're going to dive in a little bit deeper and at the bottom we've just got we're listening on localhost 3000 and we have one simple route for the home page just says hello world sessions so that is our app this is the only file we're working with and so it should be pretty straightforward like I said this tutorial is not an express tutorial, and I assume that you already have a decent understanding of how the express framework works. I'm trying to stick primarily to how the express session middleware works. So if you don't understand how express works or how middleware works, be sure to check out some of my other videos or just read some of the documentation online. Before we get into any of the configuration, and understanding how the express session works, we need to answer the question, what is the difference between a session and a cookie? You'll see that in the configuration, I've got a cookie set. And in a previous video that I did, again, link is in the description, um, we talked about what a cookie was. So basically, a session and a cookie are different in the places that their data is stored. So a cookie has its data stored in the browser, and that browser is going to attach that cookie key value pair to every HTTP request that it does. A session, on the other hand, is going to be stored on the server side. So when I say server side, just the Express.js application. And so the Express session is going to store a little bit bigger types of data. So in a cookie, you can't put a whole lot of data, and it gets very tedious if we're constantly adding more and more data to the cookie that we're attaching to each request. So it would make sense to put that in a server-side session where we can store much um, larger amounts of data. In addition, 
a server side session is advantageous because with a cookie, we cannot store any sort of user credentials or secret information. If we did that, then a hacker could easily get a hold of that information and steal personal data. So the benefit of a session is basically the fact that we have it on our server side and we're actually authenticating into the session with a secret key. So with that said, that is the main difference between a cookie and a session. And I want you to keep that in mind as we're talking about the two in this video. Now that that's covered, we have some time to get into the actual code and configuration of an express session. And then I'm gonna show you kind of how it works in real time. So what we've got on the screen right now is the express session documentation. It's just an NPM module, um, a pretty popular one at that. And you can see on npmjs.com, there's all the documentation that you would need to learn how to use this. But I'll just point you towards a few of the common things that you'll see. Um, first off, uh, of course, we require in the express session. And then these options right here are what are going to be included in that options object. So if you look at the code here, you'll see that for our session, we're saying app.use. So that's just, we want to use the session middleware. And then we've passed into the session middleware an object right here, which represents our options. So if we go back to the documentation really quickly, you'll see that all of these options are documented right here under the options um, section. Now, the one thing that I wanted to point out, you get through the options, that's great, fine. But then you get to the bottom, somewhere down here, and it talks about a session store implementation. So if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically deciding what um, persistent memory are we going to store our sessions in. If you remember from a few minutes ago, I said that a session is used to store information about a particular user moving throughout the browser or a client. And so we can potentially get up to a decent amount of information and therefore in a production environment, it would be useful to have an actual database storing that information. Now, by default, the Express Session middleware just comes with um, its own implementation of a session store, but it's not using a database. It's just using in-memory or memory that's um, local to your application, and it's not going to be a scalable solution. So what we need to do is set up an actual session store, which is a fancy way of saying we need to connect our database to the Express Session middleware. So there's going to be a lot of options um, for what session stores we can use, and they're documented here at the bottom. The one that we're using particularly is the Connect Mongo session store, which is probably one of the most popular ones. And it allows us right here to connect to the MongoDB database that we have running in our Express app. So let's go back to our app real quick and see what I mean. So to do this session store, to connect it up, we first have to have our database connection. So we talked about this a few minutes ago. Here's our connection. We're just using a tutorial database on localhost. Nothing, you know, you'd obviously want to change this if you were in production. But we've got this running on my computer and I can actually come down to the terminal here and run the Mongo shell. And you'll see that we can show DBs and you'll see that we have a tutorial DB set up when we connected to this database. Now what we wanna do is we wanna tell um, the Express Session middleware that we wanna use that MongoDB database for its session store. So you'll see that that happens right here in the store option of the session middleware. And so what we've done is we've passed in the session store object into this store option. And the session store object is set up right here, and it is basically just using that connect mongo right here, the connect mongo package, 
and we're configuring a few options. We're saying that the connection equals the connection that we just set up and the collection that we'll be putting our sessions in is going to be called sessions. Pretty standard, um, pretty standard option that we have here. You can obviously customize it a little bit. And if you went to the documentation of Connect Mongo, there's a few other options that you can set. But what I want to show you is what is happening when we connect everything up. So in my first terminal, I will run this application. So let me go to the path here and we're going to run the application. So we are listening on localhost 3000 and if we come into the browser here, I've got this queued up so that we currently have localhost 3000 um, ready to go but I have not clicked refresh yet. The reason being is because I want to show you exactly what this um, middleware, the session middleware, is doing. So let's first come back to our code. And what we want to do is go to the Mongo shell and we want to use the tutorial database. So now we've switched to the tutorial database. Let me clear the screen and we're going to show the collections that exist in that database. When I ran the app, it initialized this sessions collection in my database. But if I say db.sessions.find, there's going to only be a couple objects in here. Um, let me just go ahead and drop this really quick because I think I had some stuff from previously. Um, so let's just say db.sessions.drop. So we dropped the database. If we show the collections now, there's nothing, but if we were to come here and refresh the app, so we're using NodeMon, so if we click Save, it's gonna refresh the app. We're gonna go into Mongo, Show Collections, and you see again that the sessions have been established, and if we say db.sessions.find, we shouldn't find any documents whatsoever in this um, collection. So. We have a completely clean slate, and in order to establish a new session, all we have to do is make some sort of HTTP request to our application. So if I came to the browser and I clicked refresh here, what's going to happen is that session middleware is going to kind of fire, it's going to create a session, and then what it's going to do is create a session ID which is going to be stored in a cookie in this browser. So like, you know, just like we don't have any sessions in the database yet, we also don't have any cookies in the browser yet. So let's go back to our code. And what I'm going to do is just walk you through a few of the options and then we'll finally see exactly how it's working. So when we set up our session middleware, we have a secret. Pretty self-explanatory, but this secret is going to, well, usually it's going to be stored in an environment variable, um, and you don't want to expose this to the public because it basically says if the secret is invalid, then the session is invalid too. But in this case, I just put some secret just so that we can have it all in front of us. Then we have a couple options here, resave and save uninitialized. And these are just options relating to what does the session do if nothing is changed? What does the session do you know, if something is changed? Um, and basically tells the middleware how to react to different events in the browser. You can read up on the documentation a little bit more on these options. But the thing that we're interested in, we already talked about the session store, <clears throat> but what we're doing is we're setting a cookie max age. So in other words, like we talked about in a previous video, um, a cookie can have an expires header, and or not a header, but an expires property, which says after a certain amount of time, the browser is going to delete the cookie, and it's not going to attach to any of the requests in the future. So in this case, we're setting our cookie equal to one day. And you can see the math that we're doing here in the comment. We're basically just saying one day, 24 hours in a day, 
60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, and 1,000 milliseconds in a second. And so that's the math that we're doing right here to get to a full day for that expires property. So basically what's gonna happen when I send an HTTP get request to our sole route right here is the session middleware is going to initialize a session and then it's gonna take that session ID and set it equal to this, or set the cookie equal to that session ID. The cookie is then going to be put in the set cookie header, HTTP header, and then that is going to be in the response header, it's gonna go in the browser, the browser's gonna receive it and say, oh, you want me to set this cookie? I'll set the cookie, and now every time we refresh, that cookie will be a part of that request. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to visit our only route in the application. And to do that, we need to go to Google Chrome and we're gonna cl click refresh. So when we clicked, well, now we it did not load. So let me go ahead and do that one more time. We refreshed it. We get our response, it says hello world sessions. And what you'll notice is now we have this cookie, which is by default called connect.sid in the express session middleware. And we have some sort of value here, which somehow corresponds to our session ID. So basically what's happening is the express session middleware is going to get this cookie on every request. It's going to take the value of that cookie. It's going to say, okay, look up this session ID in the session store, which is the database, and then it's going to say, is the session valid? If so, let's use the information from the session to either authenticate our user, um, find out some data about our user, maybe like how many times that user has visited our site. Anything of that sort is what's going to happen when the user loads a different route. You'll also see that we have an expires um, property right here that says tomorrow this cookie is going to delete from the browser. But for now, since it's still valid, it's going to attach to every single request. So if we go to the network and look at that last request, we'll see that in the response header, this came from our express server using the express session middleware, we have the set cookie header and we set the connect.sid header and we gave it an expires. Now in the request headers, since we only did this once, you won't see any cookie. But if I click refresh one more time and we look at the request headers and response headers, you'll see that in the request headers, we have the cookie that was set previously. So in other words, the browser is saying, okay, I have a cookie that is still valid, let me attach it to every request within this localhost domain. All right, so we have this cookie on every request now. Let's see what's happening on the back end. So let's go back to our code. And we're in the Mongo shell, so we're looking at our database right now. And we're gonna type in db, well let me clear this real quick, db.sessions.find and that's going to look in the sessions collection for any documents in that collection. And you'll see that we have one and only one document which represents the session that we just established in the browser. So you'll see that the ID is right here, which you can also see in that cookie that we have in the browser. So let's see, the first couple letters were capital A, Y, Y, J. So let's go back to the browser and you'll see that the cookie right here is has got that ID set in it. So that's how we kind of connect the back end to the front end. And then let's once again come back to our code. So we also have the expires header within here so we can also validate it on the back end. And basically what this is going to do is every time the server gets that specific cookie with that session ID attached to it, it's going to come to this sessions collection in the database, it's gonna grab that document out of the database or the session store, 
and it's going to get information that we have set onto that session and use it to do whatever we want to do with our application. Now this is great and all, but what do we actually use this Express Session middleware for? Well, in another video in this um, Passport.js series, you'll see how Passport.js actually connects in to the Express Session middleware and uses the session to actually authenticate the user. But since this is kind of a standalone video, I'm not gonna get into that. All I'm gonna show you before we kind of conclude is where this session is being set. Now, we know that the cookie in the browser has the session ID, and we use that session ID to look up the session in the database or the session store. Now, we can also come to our routes and get information about the session. So if we said console.log request.session, you'll get to see exactly what that session looks like and we can actually set properties to that session. So again, I'm connected using Nodemon, so we'll automatically refresh when we save this app. So let me click Control S to save. You'll see that something happens here, so we reset. And now if we visit this route again in the browser, in the console, we should see the session object. So let's quickly switch over to the browser. We'll refresh, refresh this page, and then we'll come back to our code window. And you'll see that our session object has been printed to the console. Right now, all we have is a expires header um, and a couple other metadata properties. But what we could also, and, and this is set to the cookie object, but we could also set other information. So we could set something like how many visits a user has made to our page. So let's go ahead and do something really simple like that. In our only route that we have for this application, let's just say um, if request.session.view count, we want to say request.session.view count equals um, request.session.view count plus one. Or you could just do the plus plus syntax at the end. You could just do something like that and be done with it. But we'll be really explicit here and we'll set a value. Okay, so if we have that property on the session, we're gonna increment it by one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say in the response, instead of hello world, we're gonna say you have visited this page um, X amount of times. So we'll use a little JavaScript syntax and we need to change these to back ticks to get this to work. And let's see, we can just put in request.session.view count. And now it should tell us how many times we visited this page um, when we visit that page. Now we also have to say else because in this first occurrence, we're not gonna have this property set. So if that does not exist, then we're going to say request.session.view count equals one. All right, so we have set a property to the session object and let's go ahead and save this application and go to the browser and visit it. So we're in the browser now and we will reload and it says you have visited this page one times or it should be time. But now every time we refresh, we're gonna get that number to increment because of the logic that we've put into our route. So you can see how this session object could be very useful for tracking information about a specific user or client. One last thing I wanna show you, if we go back to the code, you can look it up in the database again. So let's go back to Mongo and let's find that session once more you'll see we still have just one object, one document in the database, but now we have this little property down here. So when we set the view count, 
property on the request.session object, that actually persisted in the session store or our MongoDB database under the view count property. So again, you can see how powerful this is and you could also kind of extrapolate out and start to foreshadow how something like a Passport.js middleware could kind of connect into this middle, this express session middleware to keep its own sort of data. That's it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you are continuing on with the Passport.js um, authentication series, um, I think this may be one of the last kind of filler videos before we get into the actual configuration of the Passport um, middleware. So be sure to check out, if you don't know where that is, the playlist is listed in the description. Otherwise, hope you learned something from this and have a good one.